So this one is going to be a bit of an intro to yoga or how to modify. So if you are concerned that you haven't got the balance or the range of movement um, for some of the ranges, some of the positions, sorry, then if you have yoga blocks and not quite sure what to do with them, either one or two, um, if you haven't got blocks but you still find the floor is a bit too far away sometimes, then grab a chair um, and we will have a little play with breaking down some of the um, moves. So do listen to your body. If you're doing this type of video, it might be that you're new into yoga or that you might have um, come back from an injury. I know I've spoken to a lot of people that have a bit of um, history with their back pain and they want to get into this kind of thing. That's absolutely fine, um, but listen to your body. So I am a physio, that is what I do day to day. Well, not so much at the minute with COVID, it's all changed, but um, we want people to start moving and do what they can do. But the golden rules with that really is don't move into pain. Some awareness is okay, as long as you can carry on breathing and that kind of disappears but don't move into actively anything that is your pain. If you're at all unsure, then don't do this and um, consult with someone about it. Having said all that, um, enjoy this and see what you get from it. Also saying that, if you're someone who's done yoga for ages but want to break down the moves a little bit um, and try with a little bit more support to see if it gets you into slightly different postures, then this will be good for having a play with that. So. Either way, enjoy. So we're gonna start seated. So that could be you sat on your chair if you find the floor not accessible. You could be sat on the floor or you could use a block or two or a cushion to sit on. The benefit of the blocks is it allows you just more access for the hips. So if you find sat on the floor, you tend to be a bit scrunched up and back here then sitting on the blocks just gives you a little bit more access to lift into a lengthened position. So if you're on the chair, you can be seated, legs down in, um, out in front of you. You could be cross-legged on the floor, legs out long, relaxed out, however feels right for you. If you're happy to close those eyes off, then do so. And just start thinking about being even through those sit bones and think about lengthening up through the body. This is not running up straight because that should actually um, tilt you into the back, but it's about thinking about growing up from the crown of the head. Once you're there, think about just nestling the shoulders down. So this is just a chill down, not actively pressing them down or back. So it should all feel quite comfortable. Thinking about an openness through the front of the chest can feel quite nice, a widening. But you should feel like you can stay here and it shouldn't feel forced. So once you are here, think about awareness to your breath. With all yoga and arguably all exercise, you want to maintain a steady in-breath and a steady out-breath. That shows that you're managing um, your intra-abdominal pressure. It shows that you're not gonna send your blood pressure sky high from fixing and holding. And it just shows you're pitching your exercise at the right level for you, where your body is at. So focusing on that breath in and out, thinking about a steady in breath in through the nose, and let the belly relax. Let the breath come down to the belly and the rib cage, thinking about the belly coming forward, the ribs expanding forward, sideways, and backwards. Giving yourself a hug round here, or hands on here, can really help trying to get the breath down to the rib cage and the belly. So as you take the breath in, and as you breathe out, let everything relax down. What we want to try and avoid when you take a breath in is that your shoulders go and chest pops forward and as you breathe out. Just because that shows you're only breathing into the top of your lungs, which is your fight flight, and we want to kick into this rest and digest, this calming, calming breath. 
So don't force anything. I have done a separate video about introduction to mindfulness meditation and we talk through breath and assessing where you breath from in there. So if you want to refer to that, it's just a 15, 10, 15 minute video, then go have a look at that one. So coming back to the focus on the breath. For the next three breaths, try and keep the focus on tracing the breath on the way in. And out. Two more. If your mind wanders, accept that without judging it and bring it back to focusing on that in breath and out breath. And then just starting with some gentle movement to get us going. So releasing the hands off. We're going to inhale, hands high. And exhale, hands wide. Two more. Inhale, high. Exhale. One more. Inhale, maybe looking up this time. And exhale. Coming to mermaid, you're going to ground through your left hand, press the floor away and lift up and over. Press those ribs out to the side. Breath in and out here. Reaching up and over, exhale down, and then a breath in and out, and coming back into centre, releasing the legs up here, so you might need to keep them crossed to stand up, you might need your chair, or you might need your hands to bring yourself up to standing. So just moving the blocks towards the front of your mat. So stand. I don't know what's that, a big stride away if you're using the chair and just have your blocks to the front of the mat if you want them there. Grounding through the feet, so about hip width with the feet and try and ground through the big toe, little toe and heel and think about pressing the floor away, lengthening up through the spine. We're going to inhale, lengthen hands high. We're going to exhale and half fold, so into this half fold hands come onto thighs or you can come onto your chair. So you're aiming here, you've got a nice flat back. If you find you're up here and curved, soften through the knees and see if you can stick that tailbone out. And then gradually, trying to keep that length through the spine, press through the knees. Nestle shoulders down away from the ears. We're going to bend through our knees, come into our chair position. So again, you could have hands on if balance is a bit of a challenge. Inhale, press the floor away. Exhale, half fold. Hands back to your thighs or onto your chair. Steady in breath, out breath. Something back through the knees. Inhale, press the floor. Stepping feet wide this time, so on the outside of your mat, or towards the outside. Inhale here, exhale, half fold again, so hands still to thighs, or chair, focusing on that flat back. We're going to soften through that right knee, and we're going to lengthen up to the left with the hand. So if your hand is on the chair, you're here. This is where a block could come in, and you have a hand on the block. To bring that floor just a little bit closer, you could be up here, you could be here, or low, but you might find you don't need. We're going to sweep that arm down, come back to straight leg, maybe using the chair to come up, or just sweeping straight up. Exhale, come back to your half fold. So this time, softening through the left knee, we're going to ground through the left hand to chair, block or floor, and open up through the right. So you're really aiming to lift up through that right shoulder. Option to look up. And steady in breath, out breath. Exhale, we're going to take the hand low. Coming up, aiming for flat back here, so ground through the feet strongly, either press off the block or walk up the chair, 
or bring yourself straight up. Inhale, high. We're going to repeat that. Exhale, half fold. Right knee, you soften. Right hand grounds on chair or on block or floor. Left hand lengthens up. Open through that left shoulder. Steady in breath, out breath. Circling the hand down, lengthen through both legs and take your option to come back up to standing. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, hands come to thighs or chair, half fold. Softening through the left knee. Hands onto block or chair or floor, right hand, lift up high. Steady in breath, out breath. Circle the hand down. Inhale, come back to standing, either grounding through the legs, pressing up tall, or walking up from the chair. Wiggling those feet in. So we're gonna work to come down to downward facing dog. So again, I'll give you a few options for this, with chair, with blocks, or with floor. So we're gonna inhale, lengthen hands high. Exhale, full fold this time, so you don't stop in the middle, you're coming low. So again, you might want back of chair here, chair seats, or coming onto your blocks, or hands to floor. If you don't have blocks and it's too far off and chair's too high, hands ground onto shin, or still thighs. Again, soften the knees as much as you want, think about sending the sit bone up to the ceiling as you fold forward and release that head so take your option and you're really aiming here to send that sit bone up so you're a bit active through the belly it's just not a collapse through the spine steady in breath out breath So we're going to stride straight to downward facing dog from this position. So I'll show you chair first and then I'll come back to blocks. So if you're waiting on for um, blocks then maybe just soften out and come out a second. So on chair you can just take a stride back, feet just wider than hip width and you're thinking again about sending sit bones up towards the ceiling and getting a long line from tailbone through spine to head. So we're not just dipping through the shoulder. You could be onto chair seat if you want to come a little lower. Or we're coming down onto blocks. If you have two blocks, the good thing about yoga, block, yoga blocks on your yoga mat, they won't go anywhere. So your hands are round on the mat, on the blocks, stride it back. And then you're pressing, soften knees, press bum to ceiling to get that long line from bum to head. And then you can see if you can lengthen through the legs. But that isn't vital. The aim here is to not be curled up or weight into shoulders. You want to press bum back and get that long line, hands to head, long the back to your bum. So you might need to wiggle the feet back a little bit or in a little bit, but I'll make it much more of a cute angle. So you can see here I curl up with that. So I'd have to really soften my knees. So I would take a stride back. But play for you. If you've only got the one block, pop the block in the middle, hands, we can either grip round or narrower. And same thing. Soft through the knees, stick the tailbone out, press away. This is a push movement. And connect with that breath. Steady in breath, out breath. Keep pressing the floor away. We're gonna stride forward into high lunge. So with your right leg, we're picking that knee up and we stride forward. So this is often where people find they get a little bit stuck and they've got access. So if you find you get stuck here, you can try tilting to the side. 
you can use your hand to help it or you take it to where you can drop the back knee and come up so take your option so in our high lunge position your hips are facing directly forward you bend into that front knee and you lengthen through the back and it's as if you're trying to press yourself forward so you can see my heels well away from the floor I'm not kind of sat back here and that's just being true to the position there's nothing wrong with being back here bit of true high lunge we're up here so again you could have chair to offer some support if you found you wanted the wider the gap between your feet the more balanced you're going to feel if you've got your feet kind of one behind the other you're going to feel a lot more unbalanced so take your option you'll feel that loading into the front leg if you're here your weight's a bit too far forward so you either wriggle that front foot forward or you just come out of range a bit the further apart your feet the further into range you're going to work the harder that leg's going to work and the narrower you're just going to have to stay higher so pick what works for you and that leg's probably letting you know you're working on it now so we're going to open up to warrior two so with this one we open up, I'm going to be away from you because I should have gone the other side first, sorry, but you rotate. You full block on that back foot, so it's now at 90 degrees, so my feet are facing towards the fire. Front knee still tracking over the knees, and you could take a hand on for support here. And think about opening through the shoulder. I like to think about this front foot pushing forward, the back foot pushing back to get tension through the legs so they're nice and active rather than just hanging out here. You can also think about tucking tailbone under a little bit which will get increased activity in that back thigh. Connecting with that breath. So we're going to take this to extended side angle now. So you might want a hand onto chair as you lengthen the top arm up. You might have hands onto thigh as you lengthen up. Careful you don't kick back into that hip. You want to sink in. Or you could palm hands onto block, raised or high. You're aiming to open your chest up and soften into that front knee. We're going to retrace our steps and so release the back hand. Come back into your high lunge and then we're going to stride it in and then a little wriggle out and then we'll take a stride back and we'll try and come back into that downward facing dog and go on the other side. So feet hip width, inhale, exhale. Full fold and then come to your downward facing dog, whether that's hands onto your chair, chair seat, or onto your one or two blocks. So stride it back, soften knees, bottom high, and release your head. And then connect with the breath here. Really press the floor away. in breath out breath so 
So opening to warrior two, we take that right hand, reach it round, turn on that toe to full block. So toes now facing to you. And nestle shoulders down. Check in with that front knee. Is it heading where the toes are or is it drifting in? If it's drifting in, see if you can encourage it out. If it won't go, because that feels horrible through the hip, angle the toes in a little bit so that knee still goes where the toes are instead of being dipping in, which can feel uncomfortable on the knee, ankle and hip. So tune into your body, listen to what it's telling you. Again, think about tucking tailbone under a little, pressing hips forward. It's going to increase the activity through the back leg. And then extended side angle. So you can be on to forearm on to thigh. So press the thigh away though if you're here. You could be on chair and lengthen. Really draw that top shoulder back. Or you could come down onto block. What often happens when we come low though is we kind of tilt forward. We've lost that lift through the shoulder. So you're much better staying high and working on that lift than going low and losing the position. But it is your choice. So connect with the breath. Really press the outside border of that back foot into the mat. If you're up on the chair, you might find you're a narrower stance. And here, it is all yoga. So work with the level that gives you the challenge. So coming out of this position, exhale, release the hand, pivot it on the back toes, come find that high lunge again. And from here, we're going to stride it in. So we're going to work with a little bit of balance now. So just make sure your block or blocks are accessible. This is where a chair can come in handy as well if you find that anything balance-wise you're wobbling all over the shop, then it's a good way to practice because even a fingertip support can make a move accessible. So we'll start with tree and then we're going to evolve that onto half moon. So with tree, right leg first, come onto the ball of your foot, angle your knee out, think about the hip still facing forward and then get your balance challenge. So whether that's toes on the floor, whether it's foot to the shin with a hand support, if you've got the range in the hip, you might want to take foot up above knee. You just want to be avoided, avoiding sat over the knee. Alternatively, you can fold the leg down in front and cross over. So take your option. And that fingertip support can be really useful here. Very easy to sink into this hip. So I want you to think about lifting up through the hip or pressing the floor and growing up tall so we're nice and lifted. So you should feel that bottom working hard on the support leg. So you might want that fingertip support. Spread the toes. And then you can take arm option or you can be close to that chair if you want. So this would be hands in prayer, shoulders relaxed, press the palms into one another. More of a challenge, lengthening and loading. You can keep hands together, you can take them apart, or you can take them to the side. Really easy to breath hold on balance, so make sure you can maintain that steady breath in and breath out. To begin with, balance might really make your ankle feel like it's working very hard. So take a break when you need and don't get frustrated with balance. Meet your body where it's at and just keep having a little go. So we're going to relax out of this now. So ease off with the foot and relax down. Give that left leg a little wriggle. And then we're going to go on the other side. So floating that leg up. So onto tiptoes, angle the knee out, keeping the hips facing the one direction so we're not twisting on that support leg. Balance below knee, avoid the knee, higher or crossing that over. Depending on how shiny your leggings are as well, if you've got them on, then that can add to the challenge on this. So pressing the foot firmly into the thigh 
and thinking on that lift can really help. And take that fingertip support if it allows you to add to control. So hand options again. Nestle the shoulders down, press the palms into one another for your prayer position. Or lengthening up, keeping hands together. You can feel quite tight through the shoulders there, so you might want to release. Again, check if you've not brought the shoulders along for the ride. Nestle, then down. Connecting with that breath. Or taking hands wide. Still thinking about growing up tall or lifting through the hip. So we're not starting into sinking into that hip. And then releasing on out. So half moon is another balance position, but we're coming out long for this. So you want to be with your chair, so you're in a position like this probably, maybe a touch closer. And if you've got your block, then you're going to want it just either side of the middle. And I'd start with it lifted for this one. So, we'll come into a half fold position here. Left hand's going to stay on the chair or come down to the block. Right leg, we lengthen out behind. So we're going to float that up. So this is a warrior three currently. You're thinking about lengthening the legs, being falls behind you. Your foot can be pointed or flexed. You could add one arm lengthening away. You could add two. You could have fingers, hips, arm. Whatever works. So to take this into a half moon, we're going to open through this right hip. So you want to imagine you're lifting, she says falling over, <laughs> lifting up through that hip. So I'm lifting and opening through the chest. And that hip. So you can already see why this is quite a challenging position if you haven't got some support. So we're here, so the chair is there, or you can have hands on to block and hands on chair, or you can release. So this is a challenging one, you might want to keep your focus low. You can see if you can take that hand high. See if you can raise that back foot so it's not sinking. And we come out with control. So we'll lower that leg back down. Soften through the knees. And we'll do a few cat cows in this position. So here you think about tucking tailbone under, looking to the knees, curl that spine. And then stick the tailbone out, lengthen the up. And again. Curl it through, and then uncurl it. So coming back onto the other side then. So if you've got your block, just pop it on just onto the right hand side of your mat, just of centre. And then we're lengthening through the legs again. So left leg out long this time. Float it up. Your support leg, I keep straight, is how I tend to prefer, but you could have a little bend in it take your option. Point the toes or flex but make sure you're not just hanging this leg, it's a heavy heavy thing so you press it away, make sure the whole leg is working for you and then you can add one hand up or two and then opening for that half moon so you lift through that left hip, you're opening up Keeping that leg nice and lifted, wherever that is for you. Depending on your hip range, then you can add that hand. And my chair is half on a rug and half off, so it's wobbling. So make sure your chair doesn't wobble. So if you're coming with a block, if you're coming lower, you might want to keep your focus low and work on lifting through the hand. Keep with the breath. Working very hard in this position. So we're going to come on out. So we're relaxing, bend through both knees. And then again on cat cows. So for cats, 
tuck under, look between the knees, and really arch that back, and uncurl, lengthen, look forward, and again, tuck it under, and then lengthen, look forward. Curling up through the spine. If you've got a block, we're just going to finish off with chair. This might be useful for getting activity into thighs. So you pop the block or a cushion, if you haven't got a block, between your thighs, just higher than your knee. And we're going to sink back into our chair. So again, you might want support for balance, or you might be alright. So you ground through the feet, lengthen through the spine. And on our next exhale, we're going to sink into our chair. So I want you to think about sitting bottom back, squeeze into that block or cushion, and make sure you're light on your toes. So we're going to inhale, come up. So exhale, you stick your bum back to initiate this movement and sitting into the chair. So we're aiming to have a nice flat back. We're not sticking tailbone out and creating that ski jump off. You want to think about tucking tailbone under slightly and staying chest lifted sorry, through the chest. So you're not collapsed down here into that chair. So your chair might be just a little bend, or you might be well able to work further into range. So see where works for you. With your hand option, full chair is often taking hands up high. A lot of people don't have that range into the shoulder. So it feels like their shoulders are all scrunched up around the ears. So if that is you, think about keeping hands lower or keep hands into prayer position. So inhale, lengthen high. Exhale, come into your chair. Two more. Inhale, press up into that cushion or block. And exhale. One more. Inhale up. And inhale, back up, exhale, hands low. Releasing your block or cushion. And then we're just going to finish lying down on the mat for a little, very short um, relaxation. This bit for, if you're not used to relaxation, can feel like your mind just wants to wander. Accept that if it does and just gently bring it back to task about thinking about the focus on the breath. So this you might want to grab some cushions to pop under knees. To make it more comfortable you might want a head pillow. So I'm just going to run you through autogenic relaxation which is a great way of scanning your body and checking out whether you're holding tension anywhere. So cushions on the knees, have a lie back. Let the knees roll out slightly so you're open through the hips, so feet are nice and chilled and relaxed. Nestle hands down away, palms up if you're happy to. Close those eyes off again if you're happy to. And then bring your awareness to your breath. Steady in breath and out breath. you're directing that breath down to the belly and the rib cage first. And as you breathe out, everything just nestles back down into the mat. Pressing them down into the floor and release. And again. 
and release. And again. And release. Bringing your awareness to your bottom. Tensing that bottom, squeeze the glutes. And release. And again. And release. And again. And release. Bring your awareness to your hands. Make a fist. And release. And again. And release. <laughs> One more. Making a fist and release. Shrugging your shoulders up to your ears and release down and away. And again. And release down and away. And one more. Shrug them up and release down and away. This time, making a tight, screw your eyes up and tense your jaw, and release, and again, and release, once more, and release, and this time make sure the tongue has come away from the roof of your mouth. So you're truly relaxed that top, the bottom jaw. And then return your focus, just tracing those breaths in and out. And any additional noises that people in my family are throwing at you at the minute with the dog, with noises in the kitchen. See if you can block those out and just keep your focus on the in breath and the out breath. And then when you're ready, bring your awareness back to your hands and your feet. Give them a roll, give them a wriggle. And then when you're ready, drawing one knee in towards the chest and the other. Removing the cushions, they're in your way. One knee in towards the chest, then the other. A little roll or rock. Rolling onto your side and then pressing the floor away to come back to seated. So I hope you enjoyed that and <laughs> the addition of my dog and various family members making noises that just to challenge you to see if you could keep that focus on your breath in and out. If you have any questions from this then stick it in the comments and tag me um, and I'll get back to you but hopefully you found it giving you a few ideas about how you can modify things and when um, the use of yoga box um, in your practice to bring that floor up to you to make positions more accessible and hopefully enjoyable. But thank you for joining me and I'll be back with something else soon.